Hey, thanks for joining me for another video. I've got a 24 by 30 inch canvas and I'm going to be doing an acrylic painting on it. Now this, uh, this project is a collaboration with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. I'm honored and excited to be able to work with them on another project. So since it's for the Elk Foundation, I'm obviously going to be painting an elk, which is awesome because elk are one of my most favorite things to paint or draw. So anyway, I'm about to get going. First thing I want to do is I want to start with a, a wash, an acrylic wash. The reason I do wash is because I like to work from a mid-tone. So I can go lighter or darker from that base color. So I'll get to it. I just take the acrylic paint and I mix it just in a container like this with some water for the wash. Um, I like to use the color raw umber. It's just, I've used a few different colors as the base and this is the one I like the best. So it's the one I use. So pretty simple here, just Going to completely cover the canvas. I like to use a wide brush so it moves a little quicker. I just like to go over it, kind of even things out a little bit. There we go. Simple. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll sketch it out. I actually use charcoal, sketch out the subject, and then I'll probably do a little spray, a little bit of workable fixative over top of it, and then start painting. So, gonna be fun. Okay, so I gave that a few minutes to dry, but now I'm ready to start sketching. I've got my grid laid out. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, I only do the intersecting points. If you want to go back and watch those, I explain a little bit more about my the version of the grid method that I use. But anyway, got that ready, ready to start sketching. You know, I'll be measuring a few reference points as I go. But again, I'm going to jump to time lapse like usual because it's just a tedious process. So it takes a little bit of time and you don't want to sit here and just watch me the whole time and be really long and pretty boring. Maybe not boring, but really long. And that's next. So here we go. All right, I think that should do it for now. I put uh, quite a bit of detail, quite a bit of information into the sketch, just because I feel like it's it's a, such an important part of the process. This is really the foundation for the painting. So I, I really take my time and work hard to get everything accurate, the proportions and everything where I want it. And I feel pretty good about it. I think it's a good start. I think it's a, a good foundation to build on. So next, I'm going to spray it just with a light coat of workable fixative. And uh, that way it seals the charcoal to it. And then I can paint over top of it without any issue. Yeah, and then I'll get out my paints and my brushes and start putting some color on it. Should be a fun one. It's going to be a challenge, but I'm excited for it.
So you guys have been watching some time lapse of me working. It's actually been quite a few hours and hours and hours to get it to this point. I've done layer after layer of paint, trying to build out the texture in, in the fur and the different values. And it, it took me a little bit of time to kind of remember my process and how I do it because it's been so long since my last painting. But I've got it to a point where I'm happy with it and now the colors aren't quite right. They're close to where I want them, but I'm gonna do some glazing to kind of push the different hues and, and colors to where I want them. Um, I'll be mixing up several different glazes depending on, on the color, whether it's in the shadows with cool colors or in the light with warm colors, and just to start adding those glazes. Just basically I mix a an acrylic the acrylic paint with some water to create a thin layer that I can put over top and just to push the colors a little more in the direction that I want them to be. So I'm gonna get going on that. So I've got a lot of the values and textures where I want them in these antlers, but it came out a lot cooler and a lot paler than what I hoped for as I was mixing colors. So I'm going back in with the warmer brown color, glazing over it to bring that more earthy feel to the antlers. And then I will go back in. Well, I'm gonna be adding even more of a reddish color to it in certain areas. And then some cooler colors in the shadows. And then eventually I will come back in and hit the highlights again, because this does take and cover the highlights. So now I've got some burnt umber. Glaze over some of the darker areas, bring in a little bit more of a reddish tint to it. Now I'm taking some of that same burnt umber and going here, in here on the face and the fur. Just Hitting that a little bit, glazing over it just a bit, bring a little more that reddish fur color into his face. Also seems to add some real depth. All right, now I've got just a little bit of ultramarine blue that going in and just hitting some areas in the shadows, back side of the lighting, just bringing a little bit of some cool colors, a little bit of a cool tint. It's probably hard to see on the video but the, just the tint, this subtle range of colors that this brings into it is just awesome. I love, love the effect of it. Somehow the way the glaze blends with the paint that's already on the canvas gives it some colors that I just don't think I can mix intentionally. And then again, I'll come back in with 
some darks, hit the shadows more because this glazing does seem to cloud up the shadows a bit, which is fine because then it allows me to create even more depth as I come back in and hit it again. Same with the uh, same with the highlights. Yeah, the texture right through this area on this antler is just awesome. All right, I'm going to see if I can give you a closer look at some of the colors that this brought out. I know it's hard to see the lighting's difficult, but yeah, it just made some really cool color combinations. I actually really enjoy this part. It starts to feel like all the hard work is done. Just at this point, just fine tuning it. Start dropping in some really nice details. Past the point though where I'm wondering if composition works, if the proportions are right, if the lighting's going to feel right, if I can remember how to paint past all that at this point. Now it's just have fun making it look cool. Okay, so we're super close on this one now. I did all the glazing, then I went back in and like I showed you, hit a lot of the shadows to deepen and darken those. Then I actually went in and hit the highlights as well, both in the antlers and in the fur. And I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I might do a few more adjustments with, with a little bit of glaze, but overall it's, it's almost there. Now this last step, I want to add just a little bit of mist coming out of its mouth as it's bugling just shows some, some moisture in its breath as if it were a, a cool fall morning. So I'll do that and then we'll be real close to having it done. So just got a little bit larger brush here. I get some paint on it, but then I've got a just a paper towel that I'll I'll dab it in to clear most of the paint off. So I just have just a light amount of paint because I want to kind of work it in subtly at first to find the shape of the mist that I want, and it just and it's better to go just. A little bit at a time, not to get too aggressive with it. I go ahead and go right over, right over his mouth. Kind of pushes that back, creates a little depth. Don't want to overdo it though.
Okay. I like that. I think that pretty well does it. So thanks again for joining me for this one. It's been a lot of fun. It was a uh, it was a challenge for sure. Um, just because I don't I don't paint often enough, but one of my goals is to paint more. It's been a big goal for 2021 to do more paintings, and I've definitely increased the number of paintings this year. But I want to do even more because I I do enjoy it i enjoy the challenge and i love the results so i got i got quite a few projects coming up that are going to be acrylic paintings so stay tuned for those thanks for watching be sure to subscribe and if you want to support me even more go to my website joelpilcherart.com i have a lot of prints available there for purchase so go check that out thanks again see you next time